Uh, Alex, thanks for thanks for coming on. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Ciao, ciao Bella. <laughs> <laughs> ciao. <laughs> hey, thanks thanks for coming on. I know I know you got training. You got training and stuff going on. Us. Yeah, yeah. I was in the afternoon. Uh, I got free morning. Oh, so, God, yeah. yeah, it's it's busy time. I mean, we're working a lot, so mm. it's good. It's yeah, good. Out and, of um, competition, it's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I hope you're um you're getting ready for um for summer. summer. Yeah, yeah, I'm planning to on May. And then uh, we'll see. There is one thing they call the Olympics, so <laughs> I I'd like to be there. <laughs> That's it. So what? Um. So what made you? Um. What made you get into into athletics? Um. I started when I was a kid, uh, because my father was a coach. He was coaching some kids at the track, and I just follow him. I mean, I was the, uh, the daughter of the coach, always oh. following everybody. <laughs> yeah, like bothering everybody. <laughs> and yeah, I just stepped into the track, then I kept going there. Uh, I did all the, all track and field disciplines. And then I specialized in high gym when I was 16, 17. I met uh, Gianfranco. Uh, mm. who was my first coach. It was a specialist for high gym and, um, yeah, uh, long gym, triple gym, but especially high gym. Mm. And, yeah, I was told, so that helped. And uh, it was like, oh, why don't you specialize in high gym? And um, that's it, your hand. Yeah. <laughs> so what was it, um, what, what was it like winning the, winning the world juniors? <laughs> You know, I was completely unaware of what was going on. <laughs> uh, I had a good coach uh, and I just competed. Mm, it was amazing. I mean, the atmosphere was crazy. The crowd was crazy. I, I really loved the environment of the track at that time because the it, Italian team was just around the corner cheering for me. And, you know, in, in the youth competition, you have that fear of joy and happiness and no pressure at all and that was definitely an amazing experience and a life experience i would say rather than just the competition yeah so when you um when you done well in that competition is that when you thought that um, you could do something you could, you could achieve stuff in the seniors yeah, you know, I've been jumping two meters when I was 19, and mm. that I haven't been back to that to that age since then, and I'm 28 now. But oh, okay. you know, when being being uh, doing good as a as a kid, you like okay, I can go back to that eight. I can, uh, I can still, I can, I can jump. I know I can do that. I, I just need to work on it. Many things happen, but it, it gave me the idea that I can jump high. Uh, I, uh, I know I can, and that's a good, a good feeling. That's a nice feeling thinking about seniors. Yep. Um, so, um, so you say you started when you was um the high jump 16, 17. Who was you um who's you looking up to? That could be it, it could be men as well, male high jumpers, female high jumpers. Who was you looking up to? Oh sorry, I didn't get it. Um which um which high jumpers were you looking up to like when you were um, starting out? You know, my idol when I was a kid was uh Anna Chicherova. Oh yeah, yeah, yep. yep. I love I loved her jumping. She yep. she's amazing. She has these big strides and she was so fluent. And mm -hmm. I, I was so unhappy when they uh, she was found out with uh, anti doping stuff. But yeah. yeah, she was so perfect technically. I really enjoyed her watching her at, in at TV. Um, <laughs> 
Yeah, it was an amazing experience when in, in Rome in 2013, uh, I could compete with her. Uh, we were uh, sharing sharing spaces in the hotel, uh, sharing mm. warm yeah. facility, sharing mm. the track. And I was like, oh my God, she's here. <laughs> Idols. <laughs> yeah, that's a <the> feeling. <laughs> So are you, when you compete, are you, are you ever nervous before you're about to jump? You ever? Bit, oh know? yeah, man. I, I, I could enlighten the room, like. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm so nervous. I'm so anxious, and I love it. I mean, that's the feeling of the of the competition, and I really love to live it. Uh, what's important is that it doesn't disturb you, like it's. It's too much pressure, too much, too much anxiety, and it's discharging. But if it's something that is giving you so much activation, I, I yeah. love it. I love that feeling. Yeah. Like you feel your muscles trembling, you feel like you want to explode. <laughs> That's mm. a perfect feeling, I would say. So what's, it, um, what's the feeling like, for example, um, how can I say? If you if you fail your first attempt and then then someone else comes up and they pass, and they clear first attempt, is it more pressure? You're thinking, okay, no, I need to, I need to pass next time. <laughs> yeah, you know the the first goal for a high jumper is to have a a clean series of jump of jumping. So uh, no errors would be great because it uh, especially now that the um, the eights we jump in are are, uh, are wide. I'm ninety three, ninety seven meters. There are many centimeters right in between. Not failing means getting a better position. So because you don't have many jumps, you have few jumps, and you you need to do good at that. Uh, yeah, but when some when you don't jump and somebody does, you like okay, yeah. I need to do this and the next one as well. <laughs> so this is not gonna be enough because you made it before me. So I need to mm. jump higher. Yeah. <laughs> it's, and, it's, um, it's a level of fatigue. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. And so what's it, um, what's it like when you have um, your friends or your family watching you? Is that, is, that, is that more nervous for you or does it help you? Um, now I'm really enjoying that because I feel like they're jumping with me and I yeah. feel they really don't care about how high I jump. We're just going to go outside the track and have a beer all together. So that's the best feeling. And when I, when I was younger, I, I didn't like to, to have them watch me when I was competing because uh, I felt kind of embarrassed, you know, <laughs> don't look at me. <laughs> and and it was it was much easier to jump with uh, strangers watching at me. Now I really appreciate when when my family and friends are there because I don't feel any judgment. Mm, I, I know mm. they're there because um, we have a, a relationship outside of the track and they just enjoy the moment, not having any judgment any judgment on that. So that's a good feeling. Yeah. yeah so you yeah. mentioned um you mentioned beer and you're not you're not drinking now, are you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I, I I like to have a beer uh, once uh, in a week, once in ten days. I, I'm not the kind of hard drinker, of course. I'm an athlete, but I enjoy <laughs> having good time with friends. Yes, so we also need to relax. Yeah, that's true. So how um, I've always wanted to know how do you work out which um, which leg do you want to jump off? Is that just is it just your stronger leg, or how do you how did you work it out? Um, we we doing some of course technical exercises, uh, like proper jumping, uh, and many other exercises which are jumping related. Then some plyometrics, runs, uh, strength of course, which is essential for a high jumper, and I guess all the. Uh, other track and field disciplines and yeah that's it i think mm -hmm. so i saw um i saw on your instagram you're you're a student are you a student now 
Uh, sorry? You're a student as well. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I study. <laughs> so what's it? How's how's that like balancing the um the student and the and the high jumping? Is it tough sometimes to balance yeah. them? Um, uh, it is. I would say it is because uh, when you train so much, you don't have m much energy left, uh, especially during the winter. So your head is not gonna help uh, mm -hmm. with the study. But I think it's essential. Mm, you know, track and field ends at a certain point, so it can last 10, 15 years, and then you have to do something in your life. So um, that would be helpful. I mean, and it's also a way to keep your to keep your mind busy with something different. You know, this um, pro track and field can be, can be very. Uh, uh, it takes so much. So it is so much because it's been an athlete 24 hours, seven days a week. Uh, so if you have two hours trying to be something else, that's a, a good idea, I think. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, we, we spoke about we spoke about Anna Anna Chicharova in the um, 2013 World Champs. She got the silver, and you came seventh, I think. What was that World Championships like? 2013. It was it was my it was my first one, and uh, you know I was I was impressed by that competition because we had qualification nine a.m. in the morning, so it meant we had to wake up. It's for a high jump competition that's completely uh, unusual. <laughs> we always having qualification in in the afternoon, so we're kind of lazy people. So <laughs> and. That 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 already was a lot to me. Like waking up mm. six a.m., going out there to compete my first world champs. Oh my god! Uh, I qualified, and I was so happy with that. Uh, when I saw the starting eight for the final, uh, I got a heartache. I, <laughs> I was like one eighty nine. That's gonna be the first jump. I mean, <laughs> I had been jumping one eighty eight that season. That was my mm. PB. <laughs> the yeah. other season and the first aid was 189 uh, <laughs> yeah, <but I, laughs> and then second one was 193 and then 197 wow. uh, it was kind of very first competition <laughs> uh, yeah but I really enjoyed being there I mean that was my first world champs all the big stars were there Her, uh, the other Paulina yeah, I, I was like a kid just watching and studying what was going on on the track and how to be a professional track and field athlete. Yeah, yeah definitely. So would you say that, that that World Champs was a learning experience? Yeah, it was. And, you know, I, I was so relaxed. I was so happy to be there that I I stored so many good memories for, for, from that that championships that really helped me get into the track mm -hmm. in the next years. Uh, it was like, okay, this is a safe place. This is a place where I can be a good athlete, where I can do my best. Yeah. Uh, because I had no pressure there. Uh, I, I was just watching. Uh, and that was also the first time I was in the track. I used to see in the television when I was a kid. So I had a, a, some kind of imagination about that. And I was like, oh, this is how I imagine. This is how I didn't. So, yeah, it really helped to create that, that track and field that I'm living when I'm wearing the, um, the, the, the suit of uh, Italian national team and going out there. Yeah. Um, so a year later, so now we're in 2014 in Zurich. Um, you came, you came ninth, but you jumped. You actually jumped to season's best, one ninety. So was you, was you disappointed, or was you a bit like, I got a season's best? It is what it is. I was so disappointed because of the season, but in in that moment, uh, I had, I was very nervous because I had been injured in. April that year and that which was supposed to be an easy injury like 
four weeks and I'll be back in the track was turned out to be a longer one. So it was kind of rushing, trying to do the European champs. Uh, I made it, I made it to the final and I was happy, but uh, I was kind of disappointed because of the season. 180 was, wasn't a good jump. Um, I had been jumping two meters the year before. So, you know, you always relate to that jump. Uh, but I was injured. So uh, mm. looking at it from now, uh, I should have been like not so hard to me, to myself. Mm. And um, what's going through your head? Just just having injuries? Are you just are you panicking? You're thinking competition's coming soon. Are you? What's going uh, I your think head when you're injured. <laughs> I think it really depends on the injury uh, you're having because if it's a muscle one, you're like, okay, I I can prevent it. I can uh, try to feel my body, and if it's if a muscle is sore, I just need to stop, and I need to be confident that stopping it's the right solution for that moment. So maybe you can try to prevent them. If it happens, I mean, you can. If it, if it happens and your muscle is is perfect. It's okay. It's not up to you. I mean, you did your best. You try to listen to your body. Uh, it stretch uh, suddenly out of nothing, and yeah, you can't do no nothing. If it's something like breaking ligaments, uh, breaking tendons, it it that's that's something that really happens out of blue, and you have no power in that. Of course, you can't. You can avoid doing some exercises but you know if you never risk something you're not gonna get what you want so it's all it's about keeping a balance and but but when you injure i feel i feel like you have that first two days you like oh my god everything is gonna be over i'm in the worst mood ever and, and then you eat something inside you uh starts working and you go back to the track to the gym whatever and 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 your thinking is okay i need to fix this i need to be strong i need to believe in what sports is teaching me every day and i need to go back to what i was which is the hardest hardest part i think because it, it, when you break ligaments uh for example the 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 foot ones then you need to go back to the track and take off mm. on that foot, and that's big pressure on that on that yeah. uh, um, on that ligament. And your body is trying to protect you, uh, itself. Like, uh, no, I'm not gonna let you kick that hard into this foot again. But you want to do that because it's it's what you need to to jump. Mm. So it's a long process. It takes time. It takes patience. But I think it's worth it. Mm -hmm. So, um, 2015 was a good year for you, wasn't it? <laughs> Under 23s <laughs> and silver in the, the indoors. So, how was that? That was 2015. It was a good year. Yeah, it was a good one. Uh, I won silver at a European indoors, 197. I think that was the highest jump of my life, even yeah. higher than two meters or at least better executed so that was a big satisfaction to me and then outdoors i jumped 198 uh, and in, in which uh, in, in in a competition which i remember as the one i've been fighting the most uh, i really enjoyed i really enjoyed the the atmosphere of the competition i really uh, felt like I was in a beast mode. <laughs> uh, I was like, okay, I'm just going uh, uh, and put my put my strength, put my speed, put my technique on the track. And I, I still can uh, can feel the the atmosphere, what was going around, and what was going inside me. Sorry, I have broken. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah I can hear you. Yeah, oh, that? sorry. <laughs> I, yeah. I broke my, my glasses two days ago, so <laughs> the lens is falling. Oh, damn. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. 
I was wondering when you came on with glasses, I was like, does she I'm trying to think of you jump, but do you wear glasses? <laughs> do do you have? Oh no. So. Yep. Hello? Hello. Hello. Back in there. Sorry, I lost the question. Um yeah, um I was gonna ask, um which one are you, do you prefer? Is anyone you prefer the under twenty threes victory or the silver the European Indoor? Um I think uh I really enjoyed two thousand thirteen. Uh but um that was a special here. I think in about my youth career, my junior career. Uh, but I really enjoyed those competitions I made with, uh, in the under twenty three, and that was that one in two thousand and fifteen was I think that was my um, best achievement because the height was higher, and then that was my first year to. Uh, seniors as well uh, I had been competing in 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 the world champs already in European champs already and I was doing a competition as a junior as a under 23 um, I was like okay now I'm big now I'm a senior and yeah. I, I'm, uh, and I'm People able start. to <laughs> <laughs> So, um, what was I gonna say? What's the yeah? What's the what's the love like back home in Italy? When you win these medals, you go back home. You go back home to Italy. Is it royalty? <laughs> um, I'm always quite afraid of that moment because I had a friend who used to organize parties every time I came back from <laughs> from major meets and competitions abroad. Mm. So she was always organizing parties in my street and I was like oh my god I'm so embarrassed I don't want to be back home <laughs> but yeah but I actually love the feeling I, I I love being surrounded by people I love and they they are part of my jumping so they're part of my everyday life and I really like that atmosphere mm. it's warm mm, it is how, so how was the um, World Indoors 2016? You came seventh in America, I think. How was that for you? Um, I the, Over there, uh, that was maybe the toughest moment up to that, up to, up to that time. Because I jumped 183 and I wanted to jump 186. I knew I could do that. Um, but I couldn't find uh, a, a way out uh, trying to jump higher. Uh, mm -hmm. And it lasted uh, till the summer season. Uh, I was like, okay, this is the first time I'm not satisfied. I'm not happy with what I'm doing. I need to change something. I need to do something to improve my technique, to improve my strength, to improve my abilities. Um yeah, that was a kind of delusion. Uh, mm. But, you know, that was the first one to me. So I was like, oh, it's, it's okay. I need to uh, go forward. It was the, maybe it was the beginning of uh, some problems, some difficulties, something that lasted for uh, two or three years later on. Mm. So at that, at, at that world, um, you came seventh. And you jumped, um, you see, you jumped 193. But when you won the under 23s, you only jumped 190. So, does that show the difference between under 23s and the worlds? Um, yes, uh, I'm the kind of, of athlete who's always competing to get a better position when positions are, are what, what counts. So, if I'm in a championships. I don't care how high I'm jumping. Uh, I wanna, I wanna, uh, I wanna be in the best position I I can. So if I'm winning with 190, it's okay. If I'm 
getting seven with 193, it's not okay because I, I know I could have been jumping higher. So, of course, if I'm jumping two or eight and I'm getting second, it's okay. <laughs> but, oh. <laughs> but I'm trying to do my best to get the better position. This doesn't work for mids. I mean, in mids, I don't care if I'm first, second, third. I just want to jump as high as possible. But when position counts, when class, mm. uh, when yeah, that that that's what in, what is important to me in a major championship. So, um, was you was you not at the World Champs in 2015 in Berlin? Was you injured? Uh, Yes, I, I was injured. Yes, I had the problem with the Achilles. I had a little fracture, so mm. I had I had to stop. Yep, and that was cause I remember watching an interview with Anna when she got she got the bronze there. She even said she was injured as well. So 2015, why was why is everyone injured in 2015? What what, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> it was an unlucky year. <laughs> <laughs> and the way you jump is very calm to the approach would you say that you're always focused on your technique you're a technician sort of jumper yeah uh, I think high jump is so weird uh, because the more powerful you are the slower the jumper the jump looks like and the more elegant it turns out to be but it's basically made of strength and that's the paradox because uh there's yeah there's a lot of technique but i think that there is more strength and more speed than technique which makes an a jump very elegant and very fluent yeah. And this is what I like about high gym, because every time you're trying to hurry things up, they don't work. So um, if, you're, if you're trying to do the proper things with the proper timings and the right strength, you're going to jump higher. Uh, that's amazing. It's a balance game. Uh, yeah. That That's amazing. You, you, it, if you're running too fast, if you're putting too much strength, you can be perfect technically, but it's not going to work. It's a yeah. balance. Yeah. So, um, you see the high jump, would you say it's, it's the most exciting event? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. I really love triple jump and pole yeah, vault. Jump. Pole vault is yeah. exciting. Definitely. Yeah, pole vault is amazing. You know, I, I went to do some um, some uh, somersaulting and acrobatics on the uh, on the pole vault uh, pit uh, some days ago, and I was looking at it and thinking, oh my god, this that must not look so big when you look it from six mm. meters above from above. <laughs> so I was mm. like. Oh, th these guys are crazy. <laughs> I can't do pole vault. It's too dangerous, man. <laughs> That's why they're wearing helmets. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, going up to 2016 um, and the Europeans, you came fifth. You came fifth. But was you a bit gutted because you couldn't jump over 190? I think you jumped 189 in, in that one. Uh, 2016, 16. 16. Amsterdam. Amsterdam, yeah. yes. Uh, yes, I was so upset. But, it, mm. you know, it was a tough moment to me because my my coach was uh, turned out to be healed. My mother was very healed at the same time. So I really didn't have any thoughts about track and field. I was too messed up in my personal life. So um, I was stuck in, in in my technique and I was stuck into my training. I couldn't I couldn't really cope with being a uh, a good athlete at that moment. I was my my head was somewhere else. Yeah, but would you say in in that year would you say Ruth was on another level? She was very good that year. Uh. 
Uh, I, I, I don't know. I was really messed up. That's, that is what I was thinking. I don't have many thoughts about that year. It was mm, many, many things happened. It was also the Olympics year. And yeah. I was fucking on that, but too many things were going on. Um, I, I, I still, still, I can't understand what kind of year it was to me as mm. an athlete. I mean. And so competing in London the next year, the World Champs it was. You, I think you jumped the same height again, one eighty nine. <laughs> what's what's you and? You and Laverne Spencer, you both jumped 189 and the qualifying. What's it? What's it? What's with it with that height? <laughs> the the I really hated that moment because I think that was the first time I I wasn't in the final. Yeah, so the qualifying. I, I I I still I can't remember. Still I can't remember. Sorry, the the feeling of what the final from the outside and oh my god I was dying from the inside and I, I, I promised myself I was never gonna watch a final from the outside again but that didn't work out then because in 2019 it was the same but uh, I remember it as a strong feeling of watching the other competing and trying to catch some info about they uh, about how they were coping with the competition about how they were acting there inside trying to improve as an athlete but it was so tough and mm -hmm. um, yeah I, w I was really upset mm. but okay although you was really upset i was gonna ask like how was how was london you enjoy the uk <laughs> yes, yes, I love the UK. I love London. I've been there many times and I really love it. It's it's amazing city. Many people from different countries just meeting there and being uh, a perfect mix up. Uh, I, I I love I love London. The UK are amazing and track and field in, in the UK is amazing, I think. If I'm thinking about how track and field should be in European countries, I think about UK. <laughs> Oh, appreciate that. <laughs> so, um, 2018, the World Indoors in Birmingham, bronze. So, was that was that special for you, considering London was such a disappointment? Yeah, it was totally unexpected because you know I was invited. I didn't I didn't even have the the, the qualification standard. Uh, I was invited by the IAAF, and I got third. So that was unexpected, um, but uh, that that it is also a competition. I'm very happy because I was really fighting. Uh, I, uh, I was trying to get as high as possible in the uh, in the ranking in the list, and um, I really fought, uh, that was really a good fight to me. Uh, so even though I couldn't jump higher than 193. Which is not so high. I mean, I think nobody got a medal with with 193 at World Indoors champ Championships um, in the past years and in the next ones as well. But uh, I, I was happy at the at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And yeah, um, I was watching some I was watching some videos the other day of Ruth, which has always got obviously she's always got the Spanish flags everywhere. What's it What's it like competing against her? uh she she's amazing i mean she's the the athlete uh i learned um, i learned so much from her uh i also had the opportunity to go there uh to go to her home country to her home city and we spent some time together uh i saw how she trains how she lives um you know we we're really in a good relationship, in a friendship, and she taught me how to be an athlete. And how, when when you need to be an absolute pro athlete, when you need to relax, when you need to rest, what you need to do and the way you need to do it. Um, and then she taught me that um, you can 
you can be the 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 best version of yourself when you're jumping when you're competing because that is the one which is going to work i mean you you don't need to be somebody else you don't need to imitate the others you you just need to be the best version of yourself and do whatever it takes to be there in the perfect shape no excuses uh be responsible for yourself be uh autonomous and yeah i i I, I really don't know how to thank her because showing me, not telling me things, but showing me things, uh, she made me grew, grow as an athlete. Yeah, yeah, legend, legend. So um, in your Europeans, you've come nine, six, and eighth. Why do you think, because you, you make the finals, but why do you think you haven't meddled yet? Obviously, you've had injuries and stuff, but it would be nice if you got a European outdoor medal. Oh yeah, definitely that's the goal. <laughs> so where's next year's Europeans? <laughs> yeah, so I'd really like to to get to get a medal outdoors. Um, because that's real track and field. I mean that's the original one. So mm -hmm. I'm working on that. That's one of the goals uh for this season to be you know, I've been doing a good season this year indoors and I really hope I can improve in the outdoors. That would be a good, a great satisfaction to me. Yeah. Um, not to keep talking about Ruth, but now Blanca and Ruth have retired. Would you say that kind of opens the field up because of what they achieved? Yes, I think it opens the field um you know it's a generation change and i think it's something that naturally happens uh but there's a different hygiene now i think on in the in the track uh i mean apart from mahuchik and uh, lazy skin and nobody's jumping that high so um, i think we need to be tougher i mean that's uh, a generation of jumpers we need to uh, learn a lot because they were quite a lot of, uh, I don't know if they were friends outside of the track we are yeah. we are and that can be really that can can help I mean because you're traveling you're spending time together but when you go to into the track you need to be we, we need to be tougher we need to jump higher we can't have just two people jumping so high and we following um you know every discipline has happened ups and downs but i don't want to be one of those athletes uh being in the downs i want to mm. be in the ups of hygiene and that's yeah. what i'm hoping for my colleagues as well yeah so um yeah i was just gonna say um in 2017 i know i know blanca had a few had a few foot injuries and obviously she's recently just retired um would you say that this i was talking to someone the other day would you say athletics it is a short career because how much olympics will you get three four maximum uh <laughs> yes uh i thought she was she was going to jump till uh 2020 2021 tokyo yeah, yeah she planned to yeah she planned to uh but she retired uh and uh i think she she or uh, she already was a hero jumping in 2016 in the rio olympics because she was crying when stepping out of the of the pit so she was so tough i mean she was a fighter and a, and a a hero for real she got second if i'm not wrong and jumping yeah. 187 197 second attempt and my god that was big i mean she was crying i was there looking at her like oh no she's mm. not she's not gonna she stepped she stepped out uh of the pit uh, after the first attempt and i was like oh no she's not gonna take the second one that's too painful and then she jumped and she did it uh Oh my God, uh, I think that's a way to lengthen the career. I mean, those moments are making you stay in history. 
and everybody remembers Blanca, even though she gymmed ten years and it was over. Mm. But yeah. every everybody's gonna remember her. For sure, for sure. So yeah, um, I saw I saw a video on your Instagram when you was jumping, and you um, and you didn't clear it, but it was just your passion that I loved, didn't it? It's just. Uh, yeah. Have you always <laughs> have you always been like that with anything? You're just like. Just passionate. <laughs> yes, I'm so passionate about about high gym. That's the, yeah, you know, when I'm in the track, like everything what's around disappears. Like I can have the most problems in my life, but when I'm there, when I'm practicing technique, I I, I really don't care. I'm just jumping, and uh, I I wanted that bar to to stay. But if it doesn't stay, I'm going to work on that. And my focus is going to be on that. So if you're not going to stay on, I'm going to mm. make you stay on that. <laughs> so that's the feeling I have when I'm, when I'm failing and when I'm in, in, the, in, the, in the track. Yeah, so um, uh, talk to me about the one in Glasgow 2019, I think. That was, I think oh that was, that was qualifying. Think, my God, yeah. I think that that's the worst competition of yeah. my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, you jumped um, 185. My God, I, I, I still can remember the mess I had in my head when I was jumping. And I was pretty sure I wasn't going to make it because, my God, I couldn't find any energy, any focus, any concentration uh, I, I wasn't able to jump i was a kid i was like a kid in on his first mm. day of school like oh what am i doing here uh, i was so upset and i you know when i was watching at the final uh, on the on the stands i i, I didn't even want to watch it because yeah. uh, mm. it was so painful i felt so embarrassed i felt like a Naked person. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so 2019, that wasn't the that wasn't the best of years. So you um, you and Spencer both jumped 192. This is what comes. This at the World Champs. The world, yeah. world Champs in Doha. You jumped 192. And so you had, I think you had two more fouls than the people that got through. What's that feeling like knowing you jumped the same as someone else, but you had more fouls, so they get through? What's that feeling like? <laughs> <laughs> the, the, um, you know, we were talking about not, not making um, any error, and that is part of the competition. I know when I'm going into a qualification competition i know that i know how it works and i know i need to have a clean path if i don't have a clean path my possibility to go to the final lower and lower so um, uh, it's something um, i can accept as if i had jumped less because i know that a failure in that moment of the competition is going to cost me a lot and um, when i when i fail uh, the first attempt, I was like, okay, I, I, I played my game. Uh, now I need, to, I need to jump 192 and I need to jump 194 as well. Otherwise, I'm not going to get qualified. And I knew that. Uh, uh, qualification is, yeah. is clean path. It's tough. It's tough. So in that, um, in that final, in that final, Vashti Cunningham jumped two meters. And that was a PB for her, and Lazit Skina jumped 204. So does that show how good Lazit Skina is? If someone can jump a PB and come third, then she jumps 204. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, I think she's good, but uh, I think that when somebody's jumping close to her, she starts to fail jump, jumps. Mm. So I think she's strong, but she's strong because uh, we're not jumping so high. So everybody, she every time she she gets a confirmation of the fact that she's strong, because she's she's constantly jumping over two meters. But if somebody's jumping 
before her in a competition, she's gonna fail. So I don't know. I think she has some holes. <laughs> <laughs> Expose them. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I was thinking about the final in 2000, the World Champions final uh, in 2017 in London when uh, uh, Mirella Demireva jumped uh, two or two, if I'm not wrong, first attempt, and mm -hmm. Maria had to jump two or four, and but she failed two or two, and she failed two or four, and then she made it a second attempt or third, I can't remember properly, but she was in a difficult situation. And every time that somebody gets closer to her, it, it happens. Then she can jump much higher than, yeah, mm -hmm. of course, I come with you. She's so strong, but uh, she's not unbeatable. That's, yep, that's it. So, with this pandemic, were you pleased that the um, Olympics got put back, or was you happy? Was you upset because you felt good, or was you happy for time to train? Uh, you last year, last, last year it was a mess because we were uh, under hard lockdown, so I couldn't go out of my house and lived in a um, single room apartment. So that was a real mess to me. This year it was much easier. And I spent so much time at the track because that, that was a place where I could go and, and remain open or during the whole pandemic in 2021, uh, end of 2020, in 2020, not 2020. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, I really spent so much time there and it helped because I could go out, I could go to the track, I could go to the gym, uh, to the physio. So my um, my professional activity was kind of normal. Um, I was really focused on track and field because that was the only thing I had. So I, yeah. I could do nothing. So. <laughs> and uh, do you ever watch your jumps back? Yeah, I did a lot. Uh, especially this year, because mm. I, you know, in 2016 I moved to a new city, changed coach, changed life, and in 2019 I did the same. But in in a some in in a way I went back to my origins because so I started to jump, to to see at my jumps, to watch my older jumps, to 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 get back to my old technique, to to mm. get new features, all things I had been changing in the last three years. I wanted uh, I wanted them to be in some way re-elaborated in some of them maybe eliminated and mm. uh, or written with uh, the old information which uh, were more I felt more comfortable with so yeah. that was yeah. and when I'm when I'm talking to like to the other people and even yourself um it's crazy how how you lot remember every race, every jump, like I'm talking and you, you know what height it is straight away. It's like, <laughs> I guess, we I guess, yeah. Memory. We have body memory. <laughs> crazy, man. So maybe, maybe I can tell you where it was, when it was. Yeah, exactly. If you, if you remind, remind of that, then I, I'm, I can remember the feeling I had when I was jumping. <laughs> so um speaking about the the European indoors which we just had in Poland so was 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 it not was it good for you considering how bad Glasgow was was you happy to Yeah I was I was happy with the with the indoor season because I had been jumping over 119 constantly and that was the biggest goal for these indoor seasons to me. Uh, but, you know, I didn't get into the final. Uh, I, uh, since 2017, so I wasn't quite, quite used to do double competition in three days. So um, I did very well in the in the qualification. I felt I had so much so much energy and a nervous activation, and then I was done before the final. I was so tired, so uh, I couldn't cope with the anxiety, with the with the pressure I had been putting on myself uh, because I knew I could jump higher. I wanted to do my my season best, 
but I had no energy to do that. So uh, I was I was quite happy because of the season. I was not so not, not satisfied. I would say uh, thinking about the final, but um, I, I, I mean I'm I'm okay with that. It's a good achievement. Uh, it's the best competition I've been doing uh, mm. since a while. So it's okay. It's a yeah. good. Yeah, and I want to ask: Was you was you aware of the coverage, the TV coverage? Because I remember watching it. I remember watching um first couple of days. My dad he came into the room. I said, "How's the how's the women's hydro?" And I said to him, "I haven't seen it because I saw your names come up. I saw your names come up on the screen, and then the next day I saw I saw you come out for the final. But we only there was literally that was the one event. There was hardly any women's high jump show." Are you aware of that? Yeah, I wasn't. But when I went back to uh, to the hotel, I trying got to find st- yourself. <laughs> yeah, my my friends were like, "Oh, we have seen nothing." My parents yeah. as well. So uh, then I found out there was a um, dedicated camera in the European Athletics Federation uh, website, but uh, the, the the TV coverage was oh my god, <laughs> no <was> hydrogen. <laughs> there was no hydrogen. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was wondering because they showed um obviously they showed um your um your compatriot Tamberi the, the men's high jump, but they didn't show no women's high jump. I'm like, what's going on? And you know what also about uh, men's high jump, I was watching it in my uh, from my room and I couldn't cope with the fact that they were showing two thirteen, uh, two two thirty three, for example, all yeah. three all together. And I mean I don't know how Jamarco is jumping. I don't know how Maxim is jumping. Nedazico, uh, because they were showing the jumps. They were they, they were they were not showing the the whole competition. So you were mm. like, okay, he failed two, two, three, three, two times. But what mm. is Jamarco doing? It, mm. Did he jump thirty three or or not? Is he trying? Is he failing? I mean, mm. <laughs> they were fighting each other, but you couldn't see the real fight. Mm-hmm. So I was I wanted to ask um Vashti Cunningham, she jumped over two meters when she was like what 23. Do you think it's a sport which you can jump higher as you get older, or does it it depends on who you are? Yeah, I think it depends, but and I think it's an expertise disciplines as discipline as well. So if you if you know how to manage a competition, if you know how to manage stress and anxiety and all, everything that happened in the track, uh, s- still you can jump high enough to get a good position and to be successful. Even though you know you don't have a uh, health body, healthy body, uh, and so much energy as youngsters do. Yeah, so when you're going to all these countries, all these training camps, are you are you ever missing family? Yes, I do. Uh, I I I've been spending the last years missing family because I moved to a different city to do track and field, and uh, when I and, and to me it was completely non nonsense to. To go to training camp because I I already was in a training camp. I mean, I I changed city to train, so I was on training camp uh, like uh, three hundred days per year. And yes, I I miss family a lot, but you know, I think there is a time uh, you can spend your day th- days thinking about what you're doing. Track and field, in this case. And then we we'll have time to get back to family and spend a different kind of life because I think it's hard to be an an, an athlete in the way I thought uh, an an athlete needed to be uh, and have a, a, a normal life of a twenty years old boy. I mean, it's different. Now I'm 20, 28, and it's completely different. I mean, we're more calm. Uh, also, other people started to do their own jobs. They have a different kind of life, but no more parties, I mean, or less parties, no, no university, 
everybody has responsibilities and it's easier to uh, share your life with your athlete life with uh, somebody else's life mm -hmm. so yeah in in these in, in these um in these high competitions in the past obviously you've seen lazit skinner blanco roof all these lot they jump some they're jumping over two meters so do you go into a competition thinking if i jump close to two meters i can middle um no uh, when i'm going to meet i'm like okay i want to jump as high as possible but i'm not thinking about beating something and um, somebody sorry uh yeah that's the feeling i have when i'm competing against them with them uh, in, in major championships is, is different because yes i think about the position but not specifically to a person i want to beat mm -hmm. Yep. Also, thank you for coming back to me so quick. When I emailed you, you was like the quickest person to come back to me. I was like, what? This is crazy. It's like, it's like I didn't even I didn't even put my phone down and she replied. I'm like, wow. I, I, I was on I the thought, phone. I thought, oh, okay. I thought especially when you replied that when you replied that quickly. <laughs> so what is so um yeah, go. No, no, you go. <laughs> I, I was just gonna ask, what's a um, um, what's a natural training day for you? Like, you, do you have any sort of routines? Like, because when I used to run, I used to go to the track and I would do two laps, warm up. That's what I would yeah. do before I do anything. Yeah, I have a warm up routine, and but I have two or three warm up routines that I uh, switch. Uh, I, I run, I do some mobility, little stretching, some foot exercises, uh, some exercises to, to uh, like for example, hard hard mobility uh, exercises for uh, to, to strengthen the different part of the body, but of the body, but without without being too stressful on that. Like yeah, some runnings. Uh, technical runnings. I'm trying to do them also in my um, warm up routine. Trying to do something specific for high jump. Um, that's it. Easy ones. Mm. So when I was running, the thing I most hated about 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 the training was the stretches. Do you know stretches can take 45 minutes over to an hour? Is there any? Is there any do aspect? any? Huh? <laughs> I don't do any. Okay. You just, yeah. Um... Yeah. When I, when I was younger, I used to do so much stretching and yes, it takes like you, you stay there like half an hour mm -hmm. <laughs> trying to stretch you as much as possible. Then I said, ah, okay, I'm not going to do this. I'm just doing some mobility and maybe some stretching at the end of the, of the, of the session. And how does your session um, how does your train? Does your train never change when you get a new coach? And how much does it change? According to the coach, coach? You mean? oh yeah. yeah, it changed so much. It was completely different. Uh, I used to do so much strength when I was younger, and then I moved to a coach, and we did we did no no strength at all. And that was the biggest difference. And we used to do some uh, so much run and everything, which was training the nervous system mm, but i think that that was good but not good to me it was too stressful to me i'm a kind of slow person i need i need strength i need l long timings uh, to apply it and yeah i'm kind of more relaxed uh, kind of jumper uh, so now i'm back to my strength through my beloved strength uh, and of course running and some plyometrics and uh, different techniques, uh, different different technique of jumping according to the uh, new features, my mm -hmm. uh, to the new features I have, and, mm -hmm. and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So what would you be what would you be doing if you wasn't a high jumper? What would your career be, would you say? <laughs> In track and field? No, no, no. 
the outside I, of our flags. Okay. Uh, Food tech, remember? I like to, I like to write. Maybe I spend some time writing. As in uh, a bike? Right. Right. Oh, right. right. Yes, oh. I like to write. Oh, you'd be an author. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's so hard to write something uh, which pe which people can e easily read. I mean, with passion because there's mm -hmm. there's so much stuff around. So, <laughs> uh, I, but I'm I'm studying food, food science and food technologies, and I really love the the way uh, the um, food industry. Uh, is taking care of us, let's say. Mm. So, uh, I'm really interested in that world because I think it's a mad, it's a mad one. Uh, I like it. So when you're not training, what is your food? What's your diet like when you're in the off season? Is it good? Uh, I always eat, eat the same. I'm, I know I'm not giving you so much satisfaction <laughs> with this answer, but I've kind, I, I'm kind of stable. I mean, I'm not the kind of athlete who's killing uh, killing my, herself with McDonald's when she's out of season. Uh, if I if I have if I want to have McDonald's, I'm going. I'm just going, even if I'm. <laughs> but um, I'm I'm a healthy one. <laughs> So this summer, this summer at the Olympics, what's the goal? What's the plan? Uh, the plan is to uh, to jump as high as possible and to be there and be able to fight. And that's that. That would be a big achievement to me. Grazie. <laughs> <laughs> Grazie a te. <laughs> yeah. I can do the basics, a couple words. But yeah, um, Alessio, thank you for coming and talking to me. I appreciate it a lot. Like I said, the quickest person to reply to me. So I remember <laughs> this. And, and, and also, when you, when, you do, when you do get a medal, when you get a medal in the summer, we'll do part two. Okay. I, I take your word, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Ciao. Thank you.